So I ran out of cat food. <laughs> and my cat, I don't know if it's because winter's coming, but my cat is eating like crazy. <laughs> Like crazy so I had to go get some cat food and now I have got to finish my morning routine I have got to do 70 sit-ups I have I started at 30 I went to 33 then I went to 50 then I went to 55 then I went to 60 and now I'm at 70 so you know the body is really really resilient and my body has bounced back very strongly now I'm still working on my uh, flab under my arms and like I said this channel is real this is truth this is not hiding behind some facade this is exactly what it looks like and at the best of times I'm lucky if I can pull it together however today I have got to do my sit-ups and I've also got to do my push-ups against the wall I don't have a gym I don't have the money to buy a gym membership and you know what so be it <laughs> So let's get starting on this. Now, um, I was listening to the music, but because I want to videotape it to prove to you that I am actually doing this, um, I turned the music off because I don't want, I don't need any copyright claims. So it's under the couch and on a pillow, and it's not, I mean, I'm, it's not fancy. <laughs> it's not fancy at all. I do what I gotta do. Okay, so let's start. Let's go. Seven. You put your mind to it, you can do almost anything. So, 70, 70 sit ups. Now, I don't have um, access to the uh, weights and things like that, but you know, I could always run over to the YMCA uh, in my local area and get it for a cost. I mean, I could have that ability, however. I don't choose to have to go all the way across town in order to do it. So I'm just doing it at home and I do have cans. I do have um, all sorts of things that I can use for my exercises, which I do do. I am now going to do my wall push-ups. <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit of a breather and then I'm going to do uh, 55 wall push-ups and I'm telling you. The, the different heights that you put your hands is where you work those muscles. So I've been finding when I put it up high, I'm working this uh, top part. When I put it low, I'm working this. So I kind of do a mixture of both. And you know, um, it doesn't hurt. It doesn't hurt to, even if it's not, um, you know, specifically targeting that one area that I have underneath. I mean, look at, uh, you know, there was a period of time in my life where I had, I had pipes. I had pipes. I was a young woman in the military, and I was lifting, you know, um, jerry cans filled to the brim, okay, with gasoline onto a truck. So, you know, I'm telling you, there were times in my life where I had those pipes. And so now that I'm in my 60s and the, and the pipes are no longer there, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's kind of like gravity is taking over, you know what I'm saying? So the fact that I'm even doing it, that I'm even able to do it at 64 years of age, listen, you know, if anybody's going to toot my horn, it's going to be me, but I'm not going to toot it out to everybody else. I'm just telling you, if you put the effort in, you can achieve anything. You just have to be determined. And you know, it takes that first step, that first step. Maybe you can only do five sit-ups. Oh, well, do those five sit-ups and tomorrow I'll do six. Or tomorrow do another five and then give yourself that gold star. I used to tell when I worked with, um, there was a period of time where I worked in the school system and I worked with behavioral kids and, you know, kids that had ADHD. And we would, um, a lot of the times when they come to school, they were, uh, you know, pretty zombie-like from the medications that they were taking. And that happens. And so we opted to um, start a behavioral program where there was reinforcements and there was routines and things like that. And so it worked to trim down the behaviors that we, we would see. And to be honest with you, if we kept their minds occupied and uh, their diets on, on the proper level and eliminated the sugar, we didn't have a lot of problems with the kids that I taught. We didn't have a lot of those problems. And so, um, 
you know, I kind of see that you keep the mind active, you keep the body active, and everything else going to fall into place. And with me, uh, when I started this exercise routine, okay, I could only do, I think I started out with, um, I think I pushed myself, but I think when I first did it, I did five. <laughs> yeah, I did five. Then I did ten. And then I thought, you know what, I'm ex-military, I should be able to pump these out. And I used to have to do 35, I think, in a period of time. And so I thought, okay, well, I'm going to test myself. And I did. And I did uh, 35. And I thought, hmm, I can do more than 35, because I didn't even feel that. Right? And as it went on, it seems the more my body um, becomes in shape or it comes back to its, you know, its, um, its strength, um, the harder it is. The, the more tight the muscles feel, the more effort it takes, the more fit I got, the more effort it took. And I thought, wow, wow. And now I'm starting to see like muscles. I'm starting to see muscles. I don't even remember seeing those abs when I was in my 20s. I mean, I, I wasn't a little girl, but you know, I wasn't overweight. I was maybe 135 pounds back then. And right now I'm 100 and I think it was 26. So, you know, every, in the morning I weigh myself and I'm down a couple of pounds, right? But I was 126 this morning. So, you know, I went from, in my 20s, being the ideal weight was 135 for me. And I was fit. I was fit. When I was in the military, I was fit. I could swim a mile and a half like nobody's business. Mm -hmm. I, I could. And there was a period of time when I was in the military that I had gained a lot of weight. You know, I mean, when you don't have to worry about finding food to eat and the food's right there, then it's plentiful. <laughs> and you can eat it. Yeah, eat it, right? And the beer and the, you know, the cigarettes and the lack of, um, you know, getting involved in things. But I wasn't paying attention to my health back then. I, I thought I ruled the, ruled the roost. I'm, you know, young and you think you know everything, right? So I gained, I gained weight. But my ideal weight was 135, and I had muscles. I had, I could load a five and a half ton full of jerry cans by myself, yeah, without even blinking an eye. So the truth is, you know, our bodies, even though they're more resilient than we think they are, I mean, in our 20s, we could do a lot more than we can in our 60s. But if you take care of your body, you can, you can take that strength with you right into your elder years. And that's what I'm opting for. I'm opting for that. I don't want to uh, pass from this world being um, feeble. I wasn't born that way. I wasn't born feeble, okay? I wasn't born um, to not care about myself, to not care about my body, okay? The good Lord didn't give me this life just to kind of flush it down the toilet. <laughs> So I'm going to do good by him. And, you know, that's my spiritual belief. Who, whoever your divine is, that's fine. But, you know, I'm, I'm not going to waste this time here on earth. I'm not going to waste it. I love um, the physical aspect of life, okay? I love the taste of food. I love nature. I love grounding. I love being outside. I love, like, life itself is meant to be enjoyed. And I don't want to enjoy it from a hospital room. Okay, so yeah, so this effort, it, it's taking a lot of effort from me. However, the past couple of days, I have been having uh, some pressure in my chest, and that's a warning sign. And so I was kind of thinking, okay, what am I doing wrong? Well, I figured out I haven't been hydrating. I usually hydrate. I take a little bit of Himalayan salt, put it on my tongue, and then I drink about six to eight ounces of water. Well, I haven't been doing that lately. You know, you get lazy, you get kind of complacent. You get used to a routine and you, you know, because that was a new routine that I introduced and was the Himalayan salt and drinking the water. And I thought, well, I'll do it later. And then later never came and then I went to bed and then I, and I started to feel this pressure. And I'm thinking, you know, I gotta watch my fats. I gotta watch my trans fats. And toward the end of the month, as seniors, we get a little tight on the budget. And so the food kind of, yeah, the food goes down. Now, I still have food in my freezer, right? But I'm finding that spending so much time alone, um, you know, to my, to my own wherewithals, right? You, you have yourself to entertain and that's it. I don't have a husband. I don't have a companion. I don't 
belong to any groups at this point in time. I will be, but at this point in time, I don't. So I'm finding that I'm starting to kind of like, you know, not really push that plate away as soon as I should. So I'm a little leery about that. I'm a little leery about, um, uh, I think the one day I had a small thing of french fries. Now I broil my french fries I, and I cook them in, I put a little bit of olive oil on them. I don't use anything but olive oil and I put some chili flakes on and I put some garlic in it and so, but it was a small plate of fries. <clears throat> now, I know potatoes have potassium. I also know that they are, yeah, they are not the healthiest to be eating all the time, right? Well, that's all I had. That's what I wanted. I had a craving for it. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go for it, right? I'll just do more sit-ups. But I'm finding that perhaps, perhaps that's not such a good idea for me. So what I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to find something to replace those french fries that are easy and they're cheap you can buy them for like a buck at the store so as a senior sometimes that's all i got right so i'm going to replace that with perhaps wraps tuna wraps or um scrambled egg wraps or whatever it may be but during that low budget time at the end of the month when there's not a lot of money to go around and you know the truth is I'm a senior yeah I'm, I'm probably going to need to use the food bank at one point or another and I have I have that's what it's there for right and I've con contributed to it also I have uh, you know done community initiatives where we would go and we would um, you know get the funds and buy the food and take it to the food bank uh -huh. many times many times many times when my kids were younger i did a community initiative and you know i'm putting this out there so i'm kind of saying to you if you have children maybe you could do it you could do it and what i did is me and my children i have three kids we got together in our neighborhood and we got a whole bunch of the neighborhood kids together they came to my place i solicited a businesses uh, to get them to donate um, the products that we would need to make bread and cookies and twisters and things like that. Not the healthiest, but it'll sustain you. And so I taught the neighborhood kids how to make homemade bread from scratch with only flour, yeast, and water. Nothing else, no sugar added, no nothing. And we made boxes and boxes and boxes <coughs> of homemade bread um, and cookies and twisters and all sorts of things and donated it to the food bank mm -hmm. so you know you sustain yourself by whatever method you can so there is a period of time where I know I'm probably going to need to use the food bank I don't go very often because you don't get um, like I am choosing to eat healthy and so you get food that sustains you but you don't get food that is necessarily always the healthiest, right? Because, I mean, it's it's given in bulk and it's usually canned goods. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, So the, and there are times. There are times that I'll need to use it. But lately, I, I don't have means to get down there to get anything. And so you live with what you got. And you know what? I'm not dying. I, I'm not starving. I'm doing fine. Grocery wise, like I said, <clears throat> it just doesn't matter who you are at the end of the month, senior or you know, a work the working uh, poor. Okay, it doesn't matter, it doesn't matter which you are. Okay, you might need to utilize that food bank, or you might run low on groceries toward the end of the month. So, being self sustaining and being able to make your own bread and have sandwiches, make your own bread and buy a, a dozen eggs and make yourself some scrambled egg sandwiches, or you know, um, egg salad sandwiches, okay? But anything is better than starving, right? Sustaining yourself. So learning those skills, and I taught my children those skills when they were they were little. My, my kids could bake bread when they were like four or five years old. Mm -hmm. I also um, have taught my grandchildren how to bake bread. My grandchildren know how to bake bread. So um, I think it's amazing. I think it's absolutely amazing. I do have a video of my granddaughter making bread, but like I said, in the age that we live now, I can't really post it. I would need the parents' uh, permission. And it's not always a good thing to post uh, pictures of children, 
I, I just I don't choose to do it but every one of my grandkids knows how to bake bread and I did teach it to them so I think that's good all my kids do um, now the reason this kind of went off track is because <clears throat> toward the end of the month money gets tight and I have a cat so I also have to be concerned about my cat and what my cat is eating so what I'm choosing to do is I'm going to look up some recipes and I'm going to try to make some um, cat treats or perhaps even some cat food because it's expensive. Now, I can get a can of cat food for 90 cents. That's not bad. That's not bad. But when you think, one can a day. So he, he gets half in the morning and half at night at supper time. So, you know, you, you think about it, 90 cents for one can and one can will last one day and you have 30 days in a month. And I have to budget it in. And I do give my can one my cat one can of tuna as a treat on Sundays. So and the tuna is a dollar fifteen from the dollar store. So so you know everything has a cost to it. Everything has a cost to it. And so I think that I basically caused my own problems perhaps by having those French fries. I'm not really sure because I do use olive oil, but potatoes, um, I just, I can't put my finger on it what, what caused the problem, but I was having um, uh, a tightness and that's concern, that's a concern because that is heart issues and I have dealt with heart issues for the past eight years. So I think I just need to hydrate more, I need to sleep um, my solid eight hours. I was finding that the past couple of days, um, I haven't been sleeping solid. I've been sleeping, but uh, it's been broken up. And usually around three or four o'clock, I wake up and I get back to sleep, but I usually wake up at that time and then I'm up at seven o'clock, right? So I'm kind of thinking that that broken sleep that I'm having, uh, the lack of hydration, and perhaps maybe maybe overdoing it on the french fries the other day um it could be i don't know i mean i don't know i used olive oil and i broiled them so it's not like i deep fried them in grease right just a, a tad of uh, extra virgin olive oil so anyway and i am drinking my cayenne and water every day lately i've been finding that i've been drinking it a lot more because of that heaviness in my chest so you know um i will not take an aspirin I will not take an aspirin at all. I choose not to. I use the cayenne instead. And the cayenne is right there, right right close to me. So right now, I am going to move my dream catcher and I am going to do my wall push-ups. I'm going to do 55 and we'll call it a day. Okay, so. So I've done my 55 um, or my 60, I did 60 uh, wall push-ups. I do them high, then medium, and then low. And I find that it works different muscles and it's working for me. So, you know, that's what I need. I need to get every single part of my body moving and get that blood flowing. Now, I do keep an eye on my veins in my hand. And I'm gonna try to see if I can get the, the light a little bit better here. Um, yeah, so I keep an eye on the veins in my hands to make sure that I am um, hydrating enough. There are little veins that basically tell you um, 
how your blood flow is in your body, right? And so I keep an eye on, it's my right hand, I keep an eye on these veins. And so the two veins that go on the side of my middle finger, I make sure that there's no blockages, that they're not swollen. And they're, they're narrow and everything is flowing good. And I can tell when they're not because I will get like a, like almost like a lump. You'll see it's almost like a, a lump. You could, you would almost think that it's a lump of blood that's kind of clogged up, right? So I like to keep those arteries or those veins running smoothly. And so I do, um, I take my omega-3s in the morning with my kefir and I also drink my cayenne water and I use extra virgin olive oil. So I make sure that I use the products that are going to keep my my pipes uh, running smoothly, okay? So, and the fluids in my body running smoothly. Now I have to be very, very uh, careful. I was just thinking about this. I have to be very careful about my salt intake. And the other day, I used, instead of using raw garlic, I used garlic salt. Think about it, salt. So what do they put in garlic? I'm going to have to check that out. Is it salt? Is it sodium? Or is it actually the garlic that is dehydrated and made into a powder? Okay, so I got to be careful about that. So um, I'm going to check that out. And I did use a lot of garlic on my um, fries the other day. So even if the fries weren't the cause of uh, the heaviness in my chest, it could have very well been the garlic salt. So I'm going to be really leery on that. I'm not. I'm going to steer away from the garlic salt and see if there's a, a change. But there was that. It's almost like um, I can't say heaviness. It was an odd feeling. It was well, it kind of scared me. I thought I was having uh, a heart attack, and I think you know. Good Lord be willing, this doesn't happen, but I mean, I've had a heart attack, I've had two strokes, and you know, three strikes and you're out, so I'm a little concerned, yeah, I'm, I'm getting fit, I'm getting my body back in shape, but you know, there is damage from what had actually happened to me, the heart attack, and the stress, and the high cortisol, and the high blood pressure, okay, it causes damage, it causes damage. And so the high cortisol is one of the prime uh, reasons, I believe, because I had high stress. My cortisol levels were always high, and so my blood pressure was always high. And so that creates problems. Now, when they went in and they did, I think it's called an MRI, maybe? They, I'm not really sure what it's called. It's a big machine, and they put you in it. But they had injected um, a dye into my vessels, and it went into my brain and all that, and they checked to see where the, the busted um, aneurysm was, and um, they couldn't find any damage. So my body's pretty resilient. I'm lucky. I'm lucky. The good Lord must like me a little bit because, you know, the trials that I've gone through and the tribulations that I've gone through have been able to survive. So um, I want to keep everything running smoothly. So I'm going to think, maybe I'm going to pull back. I'm going to stop with the garlic salt and I'm going to use the uh, raw garlic. And I might even try to, um, because I dehydrate my ginger, so I might try to dehydrate, dehydrate um, garlic and see if I can make my own powder. I mean, I make my own applesauce and I don't use any sugar. Uh, I used to make my own apple juice and I didn't use any sugar. Like, you know, there are there are things you can do. I mean, I make bread all the time. I don't use sugar to, to raise my bread. I don't put sugar in to give it that boost. I don't use it. I don't need it. So, you know, I'm able to, to get away with things like that, not using the sugar and not using the corn oil and the so oil, or soy oil things like that that will clog my arteries, okay, that will cause that that uh, blood pressure problem. So I'm able to, once a month when I do my shopping, and I'm only able to uh, accommodate a large shopping once a month. So I will mark into my shopping list extra virgin olive oil. It's worth the cost, I believe. 
uh, the coconut oil, it's worth the cost. And it lasts me a long time. A bottle of olive oil will last me maybe a month and a half, and a bottle of, or a, a container of coconut oil will last me, I think the last one lasted me like six months, so I only need a little bit. The biggest thing that is the, the, the most cost for me are the supplements. Potassium. And, you know, I open the capsules and I put the capsules into a spoon and I put kefir in to take my pills instead of water. I take kefir. And I open the capsules and, you know, I'm telling you, they have a way to scam you because the capsules that I opened, they didn't have the same amount in them. And when they sell them, they sell them, what, 500 milligrams in a tablet, right? Yeah. There's no way in hell that that's 500 milligrams because one will have a lot and one will have a little. So I do take three uh, potassium caplets, caplets um, in the morning. So that's 500 milligrams each. It's supposed to be, but it isn't. It isn't. So that's 1,500 milligrams of potassium a day. And you're allowed to take, I think it's 3,600. So I'm getting half of what I actually need um, from the capsule, and half is supposed to be from my diet. Sometimes it is, and sometimes it isn't. So I have to adjust for that as I'm going through the day. But anyway, this is about my exercise routine, and you know, um, the fact that lately I've been having some problems with my, uh, my chest, with the heaviness in now, it could very well be just be from something that I'm eating. Okay? It could be, I mean, indigestion. It doesn't have to be my heart. It could be indigestion. But I'm very uh, careful, very careful. I keep my bottle of cayenne water very close. And I have the lid on the top of it loosely so that I can open it very quickly and take a swig if I need. So, anyway, uh, there you have it. 70 sit-ups and 60 push-ups. I'm moving up. I'm moving on up. <laughs> I'll see you in the next video. The good Lord be willing. Bye.